Folks, do you like juice? Well, we've got juice for you today. The No Respect Podcast, joined alongside me, Justin. We're missing Alex. My name is Mackie. Uh, we are diving deep into the mind of Kent Hughes, thanks to the great work of the Eric Engels, uh, the man who covers the Montreal Canadiens for Sportsnet. He sat down with Kent Hughes uh, and did a wonderful Q&A that we invite you to go and read. Uh, and that's today's video. We're going to dive deep into this Q&A. Obviously, we've, we've uh, selected some snippets, right, Justin? and we didn't go through the whole thing and that's why if you want to take a look at it we'll make sure to include it in the description down below if you're new to uh the no respect podcast we cover the montreal canadians for the most part uh so please consider liking subscribing the video it would help tremendously and a huge thank you to everybody that's been doing that recently uh huge boost in confidence uh and uh, we saw what confidence can do to a guy like cole caulfield uh not saying that it's going to wreak the same benefits for you guys uh, for us but hey uh that being said justin justin Justin, um, the Q&A here, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, what we're going to go through uh, in terms of uh, how we like we segmented this Q&A. Yeah, so I mean, it pretty much Eric Engels did a great job asking questions about what Kent Hughes kind of plan was for the future of the Habs, um, starting off with what he thinks about rebuilding, retooling, retooling resetting, where we think we should go, um, going into the trade deadline and what specific players can expect from uh, the trade deadline, and then potentially going into who will be the next captain of the Montreal Canadiens. Correct, correct. So all of this to come. So let's dive right into it. I mean, we've got uh, we've got a lot of little parts that we want to react to, read out. Um, so let's start with the first quote, if you don't mind, Justin. Uh, you want to start us off here? And uh, obviously, we wanted to recreate exactly how we thought of it. So Eric is to the right of the room for some reason, probably drinking coffee. I feel like he's maybe a one one milk, 2%, you know, and one sugar. Uh, whereas Kent Hughes, maybe a tea drinker, who knows? But just try to put yourself in the hotel room in Vancouver when they did this, probably. I don't even know if it was in Vancouver, but that's where they are now. So go ahead, Justin. So yeah, I mean, Kent Hughes starts talking about something, saying rebuild, and then kind of catches himself, not necessarily wanting to say it. And Eric asks him, do you dislike that term, rebuild? And Hughes responds, I just don't believe in the term. People can associate a certain thing with a rebuild versus a reset or a retool. I think Doug Wilson was the first guy to use a different term. Reset is what I think he was using. My objective is to try to build a, a roster that's going to include players who are here, and it's going to include new players coming in. But hopefully we're going to put a team on the ice that can win on a sustainable basis. So if a rebuild means we're stripping everything down and trading everybody away, then no, I don't believe we're doing that. But you can create a blueprint and say, this is how we're going to do it. And this is step one, two, three, and four. And I actually believe that everything, if everything goes according to plan, but I just think that there's a natural component of having to react to certain circumstances along the way. It's just too hard to predict injuries and lack of performance from someone you expect to do something or doesn't, or somebody who steps in and ends up being way better than you anticipated. So there's a certain component of flexibility required. So he always doesn't agree of just stripping everything down, starting from nothing and doing the kind of full rebuild. He kind of believes that you have to kind of react to things. You have to be flexible. So it's interesting because we made a video and uh, it was the uh, where do you fall on the spectrum of rebuilding and and we made like a, a scale from one to ten. So from zero, um, your rebuild meter uh, starts there. And then after that, going all the way to competing and contending and what that means. Obviously, on the left side, if you're at, uh, you know, uh, Tank City, it means everything that was just kind of depicted here and that Kent use revoked and, and basically said that's not what we're doing so if there are people this is this is where it gets interesting is that if people thought that that's the type of situation that we're going through it's not and it's almost I don't want to say it for those of you who hate him uh, but Mark Bergevin also went along those words of like he doesn't believe in the rebuild maybe he didn't say it as eloquently and uh, didn't you know elaborate as as uh, um, well as intensively as as Kent uh, Hughes did in this in this uh, specific Q&A but I do find that interesting that they kind of share a little bit of a similar take in the sense that rebuilding from scratch and tearing everything apart they don't necessarily like believe in it 
Yeah, but I think it's still encouraging to to know that like we can still we still have something to build upon. Like we have young players, and the management obviously believes in them enough to kind of build their team around them and not just be like this team is screwed. We're resetting everything, fire everyone, like trade every player. So, I mean, there's I've said it in the past. I said it at the start of the season. The future is bright for this team, and I think with this management here, I think that's true. So All right, well, let, let's keep, to... yeah, let's keep going. Like, like I think both minds uh, went there. Let's see what he has to elaborate on this. Obviously, let's let's take a look at what Eric Engels, after maybe a second sip of his coffee, says here. Uh, uh, on the theme of whatever R word you'd like to use for this project, a lot of fans got their backups. Uh, backs up when it was reported you'd be active in free agency. You've said all along that you value players like Mark Recchi for the 2011 Cup winning Bruins and Tim Taylor and Dave Andrichuk uh, for the 2004 Cup winning Lightning back in the day. So are you looking at more of those types of acquisitions or are you going to uh, going for the biggest fish in the sea? Uh, Kent replies, I don't see us going after the biggest fish in the sea in free agency. If we're talking about a seven year max contract, I don't think that that's what we're looking to do here but we'll go into free agency with the objective of trying to accomplish certain things with our team that are going to match our overall plan so uh, this is after a report that um, a lot of people you know I, I'm assuming saw where the Habs want to be a player in free agency so again I think that more goes along um, with what was said in the prior uh, snippet that we just showed which basically means is that we're not willing to just be a zero and tank team we are looking to be somewhat active somewhat competitive and again the comparisons come back a little bit to what the discussions were with Mark Bergevin but just in a different delivery I don't know if you agree with that or if you're seeing any particularities in in the way that he's talking about this after after saying that and if and if people disagree and and really see a problem with this of course go ahead and roast us for even considering this as a plan uh, in the comments down below but Justin your thoughts I don't necessarily agree that it's it's the same as Mark Bergevin because I think Mark Bergevin always tried to just like make the team as good as possible and never really I don't think he necessarily accepted that the team was mediocre at times he kind of always went for that extra piece that would kind of make us better without seeing that so I think he didn't trade any draft picks I'm not saying he traded back the draft picks I'm not saying he traded draft picks I'm saying he tried to make our I don't know I'm just saying he never tried to like tank to to go back again I'm uh, but he, you're right that he's I mean it is the same that he's he's not going after the biggest fish in the sea like sure but I don't know like I I, I've, I think that at least this is good for for the Habs I think that we can't go after like the Connor McDavid's or like the the David Pasternak's of the league or obviously those guys aren't free agents but like the biggest fish in the sea wouldn't work for our team like we should go for more players that would be beneficial to a retool like a Yanni Gord type player like a, a free agent that's gonna kind of be there to be a leader in the locker room and not necessarily cost too much or yeah so yeah I don't know what you think about that Listen, I I find it interesting. It's that because I I know that there's some, uh, and maybe we make another video on this at some point. But there's the 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 free agent tickets that we're talking about might be a Philip Forsberg, a Thomas Hurdle, uh, all of these guys that could be a good fit for what they're planning on doing. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. But let's get maybe more specific to where's going for the deadline, and I think that's the next slide here. So uh, uh, Justin, go ahead. Yeah. So Eric asks, so is there more value as you make plans for the deadline in that shorter sample that there would normal be, normally be, would be? Being able to evaluate your players within the brand style of hockey you want to play moving forward. And Kent replies, yeah, but I still think Rome wasn't built in a night. We don't need to have everything figured out now. There are certain things that are time specific because of the trade deadline. And then there's a lot of things that we have to time to look and understand and evaluate what we have. 
So he's more yeah. talking. I yeah. Go ahead. No, no. Sorry, I was just I was just gonna say that what I really like and and it, because it just it it was a little bit about what I said and I feel like more value. That's why is that when we were making that video about how I see a little bit of the rebuild on my side is that you want to be able to evaluate and react to the thing and that, that was a little bit more in the first slide, but this is what's repeating is that you know don't you're not just doing this one. This 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 uh, narrow minded or like tunnel vision philosophy, and it's it's a question of like, okay, do we have things that we want to do with the current roster? In 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 what capacity are we keeping this current roster? And I believe that this is just reinforcing the fact that you know there is value, and the record that we saw at the beginning of the video, and the way that the Habs are playing now, is an indication that there is some pieces here that are going to be of value to this team moving forward and i wouldn't have wanted to see or hear a gm uh just make moves based off of record that everybody obviously hates as a fan uh and even as just like a general hockey person you're saying well this team is absolute garbage but there's such a discrepancy between the performance of the montreal canadians during the playoffs with a roster that yes was hit hard with injuries but with the pieces that were added, we weren't looking at a bottom feeder team, even though that is the case that we're in. So I don't know how you see it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think it's just good to know that he, Ken Hughes and Jeff Gordon know that they should be patient. They don't need to make these crazy deals at the deadline necessarily with players that could be valuable to them in the long run or be more valuable potentially in the offseason to trade. So... I think it's great. Like they, they obviously are new to the team, so they don't. They need to take the time to evaluate, see which players kind of fit into their plans, which players wouldn't necessarily fit in. So, yeah, it's all good from my perspective. Except for the quote yeah. of Rome wasn't built in a night; it's actually day traditionally. But, uh, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I like that criticism. Uh, uh, let's get into the to the how the deadline is is looking and and the market. Uh, and this is the next uh, question from Eric here. Uh, what's the market like now with the trade deadline finally in view? Uh, Kent uh, responds. I think every team has different considerations. We were able to figure something out and get the Tyler Toffoli trade done. We did Andrew Hammond too, but I would say one was a more significant trade in terms of Tyler. I look at it as teams will come at it from different perspectives. First of all, in the Western Conference, th conference things are so close, and I'd imagine I don't know. There's teams that if you're on the fringe and you don't know, then what are you doing? Are you making the push to get in, or are you not getting? In and risking giving away something, some component of your future. I think there's others that will look at it and say, we're really good. We've got to invest more. It's going to be a case by case situation, but there's a lot of good hockey teams in the NHL this year. So basically, what this says is that, you know, they're going to be talking with every team that needs, that has a need that fits with their plan. Yeah. You know, I, it, it makes sense. Um, and, and I mean, I don't think we need to comment that much in, uh, that much more on this slide because let's get into maybe the specifics of the players that we have and how it fits within the marketplace, uh, uh, moving forward for all the other teams. Yeah, the one thing I'd say is that I, I saw some, I, someone mentioned it on Twitter. It was someone from, I think, TVO that, Last year at the trade deadline, 31 trades were made in the four days leading up to the trade deadline. So, I mean, just because things aren't happening right this second, knowing that we're kind of a tanking team, doesn't mean that trades won't happen. And all the more reason to be to be patient for Kent Hughes. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's a, a couple of quotes. We're going to be looking at Arturi Lekkonen in this first one, Jeff Petrie, and then Ben Sherratt. So let's start off here. Uh, you want to go ahead, Justin, here? Yeah, sure. So Eric asks, how do you view Arturi Lekkonen's situation? A pending R RFA who's a year away from UFA. A valuable player, a valuable player to your team, but also a, on deck for a contract that could crowd your bottom 6'4 group with another pricey player if you keep him. Kent answers, we're not trying to trade him right now shock interesting <laughs> i think i've said about a number of players on, i think i've said that about a number of players on our team we're not trying to trade them but that doesn't mean we wouldn't receive phone calls with regards to them and if something happens we weren't specifically trying mm -hmm. to trade try, tyler to fuller either 
It just materialized through a conversation with a deal that we thought made sense for us and Calgary. Uh, and Calgary thought it made sense for them. I think I said it before, we're not looking to do a fire sale here. And the more time we have to evaluate our group and make intelligent decisions, the better off we are. Interesting. So, yeah, so this interesting. one, this one's big. This one's big because we talked about this in that last video, and I think we both agreed that it's time to trade Arturi Lekkinen because of how well he's playing and because of the situation of the Montreal Canadiens. Now, there's two ways of viewing this, I think. There's either a sense of... Kent Hughes is a very intelligent man that knows that NHL teams are listening to every piece of content uh, that, that are managing the narrative that's behind this team and that are going to listen to this and know that this is a way of making sure that his value is not uh, undervalued and that he can somewhat increase the perceived value in terms of the way that they look at this player within the organization. Now, I could be completely completely off because there's a sense the side of me that thinks that the other side of me just says that this is the truth because at the end of the day he's just going to have phone calls and really down to earth conversations with the organizations here regardless and they'll know exactly what he's thinking so i don't know if there's any media manipulation in this co this context i like to present both options i don't know what you think yeah. interesting point um but yeah i don't i don't think we should take his words like I, I, when he says we're not trying to trade him right now, he goes a sentence later and says that like, oh, we'll still kind of listen but, to phone calls. So yeah, it, I think exactly. it's kind of similar to what we we said in our in our trade video there, where like if we can get a first rounder for Arturi Lekin, and they're probably gonna bite, they're probably gonna trade him. But if not, he's a he's a valuable player that they could keep, and he could be there in, ne in the next few years, and he could be just as valuable with us than in a trade. So yeah, I I, yeah. I don't know if there's much to look in here, but we can move on to uh, the next player, which is Jeff Petrie. Very interesting. Yes, yes, yes. So we we had a, an update on this, and again, the 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 difference for Habs fans that have been watching Jeff Petrie since Marty St. Louis has come has been noticeable. A guy that uh, basically forgot how to play hockey before Marty, and now gets into to this new era with the coach and the management, and have seemed to fall fall in this groove. A nice little uh, nice little image, a close up of uh, of Kent Hughes there. So here, uh, Eric says, back to your players. What's the status with Jeff Petrie? Uh, so, um, another tweet, I guess, just to say that Jeff Petrie's day to day with an upper body injury, good Canadians still practicing today, but in a non-contact Jersey so that you guys get that information as we talk about this. Kent Hughes. I don't know how much more color I can give to the situation. I love the way he says that, you know, color Great, situation. Cool, cool, cool vocabulary. Yeah. It's just boy. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I've said if we can move him, we'll move him. It has to be a solution that makes sense for organization too because he is a good hockey player. He's a really good hockey player and he's showing that right now. So uh, the the one thing that I think when you look at the difference in the delivery of the message is that Arturi Lekanen, it's a little bit more like we're going to hold on to him whereas this one is like we are looking to move Jeff Petrie, but it just needs to be the right thing. So you have to blow me out of the water for um, Arturi Lekanen, whereas I think that their their threshold to trade Jeff Petrie from what I gather here is a bit lower because I think he also wants, would welcome yeah. a, a change of scenery. I mean, you can't, that makes sense. you can't forget that Jeff Petrie did request a trade earlier in the season. So, I mean, it's, it's something that they have to consider seriously and I yeah. mean, again, this is something that could happen potentially in the offseason as well. If Jeff Petrie continues this good pace of his under Martin St. Louis and shows that he's he's much more consistent than he showed in the first half of the season, then maybe he has much more value in the offseason. So it's it's something to consider. I, and But I, from what I see from Kent Hughes, I don't think we'll see Jeff Petrie in a Habs jersey next year. Yeah, I just don't think it's going to be at the deadline, to be honest. Unless there's something that comes quickly or or uh, or whatever it is and, and something that's going to be taking on Jeff Petrie's contract, I see it being more of a summer move. Uh, 
where teams don't have to kind of lock in something of that much cap space and that much term. But we'll see. Maybe I'm completely wrong. So moving on to something that's absolutely uh, locked in almost uh, is is the fact that Ben Sherrod is probably on his way out. Uh, let's get into this. Eric asks, uh, there's been a lot of report... Uh, reported interest in Ben Sherrod. You said previously you'd move him when you get what you're looking for. Are people trying to squeeze you on that as uh, the uh, as we approach the deadline? Um, Kent Hughes, I don't think people are trying to squeeze us. Again, if I look back at his own experience as an agent in free agency, there's a lot of explore uh, a lot of exploring that goes into this type of process i'm guessing teams are trying to understand what the cost of Sherat is versus another potential option they're going to make their decisions conversely we would look and compare different options of what fits best for us uh and then lastly uh kent hughes uh, this is i think just another snippet here uh, on ben Sherat is right and again the timing of it is important more information you have the better and like i've said before we'll trade ben Sherrod, but we're not trading everybody so that the, the biggest difference in the three players that we went ahead and, and spoke about is the fact that ben Sherrod confirmed going to be traded so say your goodbyes now it's been beautiful with ben i love them but it's going to happen. So when it will is the only question uh before the deadline which is march 21st now what I was worried about, and he does bring it up in this, but but I don't know if it's an actual problem uh, because it doesn't seem to be one in the way that he's talking about it, is the fact that he was so open about trading Ben Sherratt in, in the way that he's communicating about it. And that's something I am not used to. Uh, I, I think nobody is used to it because uh, we were under Mark Bergevin, who, who basically was very good at keeping all of his cards close to his vest. Now... Uh, in 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 uh, you know, conversely, if I can uh, borrow what was said here in this, um, Kent Hughes opening up about that, I would feel is not the smartest move. But I guess they're managing. I don't know if there's any impact on the what why it's been taking so long, or if it's it's uh, wanted in this situation for Ben Sherratt. I mean, I think it's one of the, one of those things. I don't think it's necessarily bad to say that you're trading a player. Like it's it's public knowledge. Like the, he's talking to all these GMs. The GMs know that he wants to trade Ben Sherratt. It's on the trade bait board. Everyone knows it. So I I mean, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to to say that you're trading a player, especially with Montreal's position right now. Um, I do think that uh, what was I gonna say? Jeez. I completely forgot think, my my train of thought there. Li listen, it's not a problem. Uh, you know, you guys reading, reading, and doing these videos live uh, in one shot sometimes uh, can take a toll. And uh, you see an exhibit A here on Justin's part. So <laughs> if it comes back to you, we'll come back to it. So uh, let's move on. We'll maybe rapid oh, I, fire. Sorry, the rest I remember. Of this. I remember. Um, I remember. It. Please, okay, fantastic. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, I'm very wait sorry. to wake up at the end of the video. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think part of the reason why it's taking long and like people are thinking they're trying to squeeze them is it always takes a long time for the first like bigger players to be traded at the trade deadlines for the, someone to set the bar for like what a premium kind of defenseman would get at the trade deadline. So it's not the first person doesn't want to dive in and, and trade them. So like it's. It's always that first trade that takes a while, and then after that, the the gates open, and there's tons of trades that go through. So, I think that's maybe what could be happening because I do think that Ben Sherrod's probably one of the most valuable defensemen available at the deadline this year. Yeah, well, that was a great addition. I'm I'm happy that it came back to you in the in the sudden. Yeah, it took um, me about a minute and a half it, to think of it. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's loading time. Uh, but but before we get into the the la last couple of slides, um, that about does it for everything that relates to the trade deadline, the vision of Kent Hughes, uh, how they're going to approach this uh, as a as moving forward, and and it gives us insights. So at this stage of the video, it'd be interesting to get your thoughts. If you have any comments, are you sad are you are you angry about this 
Uh, you know, you're you're welcome to share it with us because we'd like to, you know, get your thoughts. We can use it for more content and, and shout you guys out. So please don't be shy. Again, we're just two people recording a stupid Habs video. So don't worry. Don't be shy. And, we, we you know, it'd be great to get you involved. So moving on to the rest of the snippets that we found interesting that we wanted to cover. Uh, this one is about Brendan Gallagher. And now this, uh, it doesn't really come up as a trade conversation, but, um, you know, it talks a little bit more about his value within the organization so this is kent hughes on on brendan gallagher so i don't really have a lot to say about galley hughes responded about the winger who's in year one of, of uh six year 39 million contract that comes with a modified no trade clause and a no movement clause he's been a great contributor to this organization for a long time and he's on a long-term deal he works his butt off he's been pretty impactful on this road trip when you watch him he's missed a couple of great chances uh, which always happens when you're snake bitten. But he's averaged close to 30 goals a year in his career. He missed one in Edmonton. I don't know if you saw uh, where the, yeah, you know, I'm not going to necessarily finish uh, that part of it. But all of this to say um, is that Brendan Gallagher is valued. Uh, for what he brings. There's an element of luck and snake bittenness, if I could say it that way, that Kent Hughes sees. And uh, no confirmation on this player being traded, if that's what we were looking for. So yeah. I don't know I, if that's a shock to you. I don't find it a shock given his current situation, the amount of years left on his contract at his pay. I know a lot of people want to see him moved. But the reality of right now, what I'm reading here is him dodging the question of uh, or dodging a way of saying that Brendan Gallagher is not getting, getting you anything on the market, basically. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, think the encouraging thing is that Kent Hughes kind of says that he's averaged close to 30 goals a year, which makes me believe that he thinks he can get back to that level. So, I mean, to me, Brendan Gallagher would be the perfect player to be kind of your next leader on the Habs. So I hope that that can happen. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's we can expect. I don't think we can expect Brendan Gallagher to get traded anytime soon is what I'm I'm seeing from this. Yeah, no, I uh, yeah, I completely agree, and it, it makes sense honestly with this current timeline and the way that it's going on. So, uh, moving on to the last quote, and this is really uh, just a question of um, the captain, uh, and and this is relates to basically Brendan Gallagher. Uh, we just found it interesting to to make the segue here. Um, just uh, how will you decide it is basically what Eric says here. We haven't gone any further in terms of determining how we'll go through that process. Talking about it, uh, the focus remains on the deadline, and then you know that just makes sense. I don't know at this stage how much the captaincy is a big de deal. The Habs are playing well, and they have a true leader, and that's what we'll end on. Uh, and that's Marty St. Louis. And that's the last question that um, Eric asks, uh, which is, uh, let's just take a look at, at uh, the last slide. You got it, Justin? Yeah, yeah here we go. So what are your players proving to you under Marty? Uh, and this is obviously, if you're a Habs fan, you've seen it. But here's Kent Hughes's take. They're resilient. A great group of characters. It's interesting because they just had their rookie party and all the guys that work equipment and that stuff talked about how well it was done and what a great group of guys they are. They had a lot of fun. It was tasteful. Taste. And everyone wanted to be here. Yeah, tasteful. I love that selection of word. Uh, I think we have a really good group of people and a good mix. People get along really well on this team and they're working hard. We're not making the playoffs, but they're out there trying to win every hockey game. And I think that's an important look for us. So on that note, you know, all of this to say that that the Montreal Canadiens are not are not the team that we saw at the first half uh, of this year. From from at least what Kent Hughes is saying here, uh, and obviously the record is showing, and and it's changed under Martin Saint Louis. But but for you as Habs fans, you know, has this recent win streak been something that has kind of taken away some of that doubt and and reacting to everything that we just discussed it's going to be interesting to get your takes on this uh justin any final comments on on what kent hughes said about the group i mean i don't think anyone would be surprised hearing that the core of this group is close and it's they're a good group of guys like we all saw last year in the playoffs how tight they were and how great of a group they were that they could rally back and and make that run 
And we can't forget that most of these, like, there's a lot of injuries, but the core of this team is still the same core that was there last year. So, yeah, I mean, we have a good core. It might, we might have to say goodbye to some of the players, which is sad, but I think it, it's looking up for the future. I like it. I like it. Well, on that note, we leave you on this. And again, uh, uh, check out the Q&A that Eric Engels wrote. This is not the complete one. Uh, more details on that, and we'll have it in the description down below. But for Justin, for Alex, who's not here, my name is Mackie, and you've joined the No Respect podcast uh, covering the Montreal Canadiens. Again, if you enjoy this type of content, Habs content, if you like Kent Hughes, who's coming in on the left here, oh, baby, uh, you've come to the right place. Uh, so, uh, you know, we uh, low key we have a goal to hit uh, a thousand subscribers if we can by the end of the year uh, so it'd be a huge bump uh, uh, for us if you guys do like this type of content uh, but again I don't blame you if you don't feel like it you're just spamming the subscribe button though I like it <laughs> but all that to say guys thank you so much for watching this this video and we will see you relatively soon go Habs go uh, et merci et bonsoir <laughs>